Hello everyone, welcome back to Native Engineering. We are doing another exercise. The exercise that we are doing is an exercise that I've taken from a question paper that was written on November 2019. It's question number four and it reads as follows. A single cylinder, single acting compressor of a vapor compression refrigerant plant operating between temperature limits of a negative 6 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius has a swept volume of 1,500 cm cubed. The volumetric efficiency of the compressor is 90%, while the mechanical efficiency is 80%. The power required to drive the compressor is 9.25 kilowatts, whilst rotating at 1, 122 revolutions per minute. At the compressor inlet, the ammonia is 90% dry, while at the compressor outlet, it is superheated. The specific heat capacity for superheated ammonia is 1.814 kJ per kg Kelvin. And then they say the following are extracted from ammonia tables. They gave you the table and then we go to the questions. Use the given data to calculate. 4.1. The effective swept volume of the compressor in cubic meters. 4.2. The mass flow rate of the ammonia in kg in kilogram per minute. 4.3. The work done by the compressor in kilojoules per kg. 4.4. The specific enthalpy of the ammonia at the compressor inlet. 4.5. The specific enthalpy of the ammonia at the compressor outlet. 4.6. The temperature of the ammonia after compression in degrees Celsius. 4.7. The heat extracted from the condenser in kilojoules per minute. And then this is the information that you are given. I drew this diagram because you are told about the compressor. Whether we will use it or not, that will be de determined by the, the questions. So these are our two main diagrams, the TS diagram and the pH diagram. We're told that the refrigerant before compression at 90% dry, which means it's still wet steam. That is why it's in the, the, the wet steam region. And then after the compression, it is, it is superheated. After the condenser, it is wet. It is, it is um, liquid, but not undercooled. And then after that is expansion, we know what's going on here. We know what's going on here. But given the swept volume, volumetric efficiency, mechanical efficiency, power, we are given the rotational frequency, superheated, specific heat capacity for superheated, then we are given the dryness fraction. And from there, we go to the questions. They say 4.1. The effective swept volume of the compressor in cubic meters, they want the, the effective volume. We know, since we are given volumetric efficiency, and we know that volumetric efficiency is equals to the effective volume divided by the swept volume. Swept volume we already have times 100. And the volumetric efficiency we, we do have. So E, V, the Swept volume, the swept volume, since we are told to calculate for this in cubic meters, we have to, 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 to convert it from 1,500 centimeter cubed to meter cubed. And then we can use it. The answer that we're going to get here will be meter cubed. And then we substitute the volumetric efficiency we are given as 90%. It's equals to this is what we're looking for 0 0.0015. And here we are going to get our effective volume as 0 0.00135 cubic meters we go to 
the mass flow rate of uh, the ammonia in kg per minute we have the effective volume just calculated it we have a formula the effective volume can be given by this formula hg plus mass times the volumetric efficiency and since we are told to calculate in cubic meters per minute we are going to include the rotational frequency this is the effective volume this is the specific volume that we are getting from the steam table from the specific volume we want to get the total volume we're going to times by the mass but because we are looking for effective volume this is the total volume this will give us the total volume we want the effective volume we are going to uh, include the volumetric efficiency because these two will give us the total volume or the swept volume so from here we're going to include the rotational frequency because we're told to calculate in cubic meters per minute and then from here we substitute the only thing that we do not have here is the mass that we're looking for and the mass will come out in kgs per minute because we haven't changed this we didn't uh, divide by 60 so it's still in revolutions per minute so what we're going to do here is, is 0 0.00135 our hg i got it as first let's just make m the subject of the formula and calculate everything let's make this subject of the formula it's ve times n and uh, it will be vg times the um, volumetric efficiency and then from here we are going to say What's our effective volume? Our effective volume is 0 0.00135. 1, 2, 2. That's our rotational frequency. Our VG, I got it as 0 0.01222 times our volumetric efficiency, 90%. And then from here, I got our mass as 40.44. For kilograms per minute, and then we go to question number three. Calculate the work done by the compressor in kilojoules per kg. Work done. Where can we find work done? It is given by H. It's given by h2 minus h1 but now we do not have the value of h2 we do not have the value of h1 so we have to get another way to calculate for the work done we are given the power can we use the power to get the work done let's see power it's given by work done per second so we know that most of the time since we are getting our work done from the specific enthalpies which is h2 and h1 our work done will be kilojoules per kg so to take it to what to power we're going to divide to two times by the mass by the mass and if our mass is in a uh, kilo kilogram per minute this will be our work done so this is a formula if this it's in kilojoules kilogram brother per second so now we just calculated for our mass and it is in kilo kilograms per time that time we can turn it to from minute to seconds so we are going to say our work done we're going to get it from this and say work done it's equals to the power divided by the mass but remember from the information we are given what mechanical efficiency so in our equation we have to include the mechanical efficiency since this is what is being uh, exerted by the motor that we are using we want the power that is used so we're going to say power it's equals to what 9.26 which is what we are given times 0 0.8 which is the mechanical efficiency that we are told about and this will give us 7.4 kilowatts. Then from here, we're going to say our work done 
it's equals to the power divided by uh, the mass which will be 7.4 divided by the mass 14.444 this will be divided by 60 because we want it to be in seconds so we can just put the 60 here and here we're going to get our answer is 3 0 0.739 kilojoules per kg and then we go to 4.4 they see the specific enthalpy of the ammonia at the compressor inlet the specific enthalpy at the compressor inlet what is the state of ammonia before compression compression we know it's before compression it's here number one number one we are told that it is what wet steam so the specific enthalpy will be h1 as equals to h wet at let's say pressure number one since we're not given the pressure but we're given the, the temperature we can just say o minus six degrees Celsius. and then h1 will then be given by hf plus strainless fraction h f g we are going to extract this from our table and the values that i'm getting on my side it's 72 plus 0 0.9 from our table we do not have hfg we're going to say hg that's given by hf plus h f g h f g then it is equals to h f g as then equals to h g minus h f which will be these values i extracted from the table uh 20.5 minus 72 which will give us our h f g being equals to 248.5 kilo joules per kg then we take it to our equation is 248.6 here it's um yeah 0 0.5 not 0 0.6 0 0.5 which will give us our value for h1 as being equals to 295.65 as a unit kilojoules per kg Four point five. They say the specific enthalpy of the ammonia at compressor outlet. Compressor outlet. It's what H two. What's the state? It's wet. It's a superheated, as you can tell from the diagram that it is in the superheated region. So we're going to say our H five four point five. I mean, it's what is our H two. And it is equals to H soup at pressure number two, or we can say two seven degrees Celsius. It is therefore given by HG plus superheated specific capacity for superheated T soup minus the saturation temperature. And then this we're going to extract from our um, this from our table but we can tell that we are not given what the specific heat capacity so we cannot use this formula let's find another way to calculate for h2 we know we have work done it is given by what h2 minus h1 h1 we just calculated we are looking for this and we did calculate for this so we are going to say our h2 is therefore given by work done plus h1 work done we have h1 also therefore our h2 is given by three 
26.389 kilojoules per kg. And then we go to 4.6. They say the temperature of ammonia after compression, and we know that after compression, what is the state of ammonia? The nature of ammonia. It will be superheated steam, and we are going to use H2 is equal to Hg plus C soup, T soup minus T saturation. Oh, sorry. From this from this equation, this is not what we didn't have. This is the value that we didn't have. This we are given. I'm sorry about that one. So now it is exactly what we want. We want to calculate on this uh, equation. So we are going to say it's the value of H two is three two six. We just calculated H G. I got that it is equals to what. <laughs> 279.9 plus the specific heat capacity were given as 1.814 T soup minus the saturation 27. And then from here, we solve for T soup, which will be 52.628 degrees Celsius. And then we carry on to the last question. They say the heat extracted from the condenser in kilojoules per minute. H 4.7. The heat energy that is extracted is equal to H2 minus H3. They say in kilojoules per minute, this times by mass. We know our mass is in what is in kgs per minute therefore the answer that we are going to get here the si unit for the answer will be kilojoules per minute we are going to get kilojoules per minute because of this it's given in kgs per minute so we are going to say three two six point three eight nine minus one five nine point seven times the mass which is 14.444 and we are going to get the heat that is extracted at two, as 2407.656 kilojoules per minute and that is at the end of our question i will see you on the next video